Hey guys, so today I have a very, very special guest. The one, the only, please insert the drum roll. Avera Maria Santo. I tried playing drums. It didn't work. Like she can only have so many talents. Exactly. So, so she's a dear sister in Christ of mine. I'm the other gay Catholic YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, on YouTube, Instagram, uh, and all of that, I share my testimony of being a practicing Catholic while experiencing same-sex attractions. So the minute I saw him, I was like, oh my gosh. This needs to happen, like a collab Holy needs to happen. Holy spirit, yes. you are. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here today to um, speak on the beautiful teachings of the Catholic Church and specifically how we both um, live out um, in obedience to those teachings, living chaste lives. We are going to answer some questions and some um, stereotypes and different things that people have asked me personally, maybe her personally as well, regarding this topic. Without further ado, here is Spilling the Tea on Homosexuality in the Catholic Church. We gonna do this here, <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> God, yes, God. yes, yes, Jesus. Jesus. He's good all the time. All the you time, he is good. Yes. First of all, thank you to everyone who um, helped me, like submitted questions and stuff like that. It really meant the world to me. Gave us content for this video. Thank you. Thank God. <laughs> thank you guys. Let's like swipe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, so the first question, um, do you ever get lonely? Every minute of every day. All the time. We, like, can you yes. cooperate? <laughs> we actually just cried a second ago. Yes. Because like, we were so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, you are never going to not feel loneliness to some extent. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely extroverted and I can be in a room full of people living my best life and still feel some sort of loneliness. Mm -hmm. The reason that we feel that though is because we're not meant to stay here on earth. Earth is not our home. This is basically just a journey. If we were completely content on earth, we'd stay here. Yeah. So, you know, we wouldn't want to leave. But because we still suffer, we still feel that pang of loneliness, mm -hmm. we desire our Creator. Deep in that wound of loneliness, Christ very visibly shows His face. We have to be willing to look into that. We have to be willing to go deeper into that and see Him. Otherwise, we'll try, um, try as we might, to get other people to fill that mm. void. When you put that kind of pressure on another person, they're not going to be able to fulfill that role. You know, they're ne another person is never going to be able to take your loneliness away. When a lot of people ask this question, I feel like they're asking it saying, rather than do you ever get lonely, it's more like because you're not dating someone yeah. or because you're not married to another human being. It's just a misconception where whether you're married or not, it's like Avira said, we're always going to have that void that only God can fill, you know, yeah. that... It's God-shaped. It's exactly, a God-shaped hole. That, you know, like, I'm so human, so I still have the desire. So there are moments where it can be a struggle. I'm not going to lie about that. But greater joy comes from having God fill that mm -hmm. hole. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, like, he's the best comfort. He's the only one that can. So. And also, don't be fooled by the social media culture. I don't care how many people post Tea. those pictures. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we're so happy in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that a lot of times when when a lot of couples start posting more and more and more pictures, it's like they're trying to prove they're in yeah. love. Mm -hmm. And then they come to a point where they can't prove it anymore. Yeah. And then they just stop posting the photos. And let me tell you, however, in their relationship with God, that does not happen. That does not happen. God does not have Instagram. He will, he will, <laughs> God does not have Instagram. He will never let you down. So we don't got to worry about that with God. We don't. So we're good. We're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> so next question, how important is fellowship in this discernment? Oh my gosh. My three closest friends, like three closest friends in the world all have same sex attractions as well. It is crucial mm -hmm. for us to be able to talk about yeah. the things that we're going through, to be able to say like, I went to the mall today, I saw this girl, could not take my eyes off her, and my friend would be like, oh my gosh, something like that happened to me last week. Yeah. Best feeling in the world. We definitely need to have those friends who know what we're going through, can not only sympathize, 
but empathize with yeah. us. You know, because there's a big difference between the two. Exactly. It's an amazing thing to be validated by the church and to be validated by fellow mm -hmm. brothers, sisters in Christ, but it's a whole nother thing. It's another ball game. Yeah, like, to be validated really? by someone who's walking with the same cross. Yeah. For me personally, I've had people like Avera and all my friends, you know who you are, my brothers, sisters in Christ, who are also battling same sex attraction on the daily with me. It's just a beautiful connection. It's so intimate and so raw. I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't have my friends. I have other like super, super amazing yeah. friends who don't have same sex attractions, but they're still so good about being there for me, praying mm -hmm. for me, uplifting me, all of that. Mm -hmm. They are so, so great. I love them to death yep. and they know I love them. It's just, it's different yeah. to have somebody who has a similar cross to be able to carry it alongside them and then help them out when they need it. And then they're there to help you out when you need it. Amen, amen. Unmatched. But we see you. All those we, do. Are, we still we see, see you guys. You. We still we see you guys. We appreciate y'all's prayers. Okay, so next question. Are you still friends with active LGBT individuals and how do y'all meet on this topic? I'm still uh, really good friends with a lot of people who identify as gay uh, and different things like that. We have some of the best conversations about morality, yeah. sexuality, faith, all of that. You know, to this day, one of my very best friends, she knows who she is. We definitely differ on a lot of on a lot of things, but you know, when it comes down to it, we can still be civil. We can still have a good time. We went to a concert together. You know, Amen. So. I think it's a huge misconception in society today that if we disagree on something, we can't can be, be friends. friends. Like that is the dumbest thing in the world like that is so so stupid it's and you're funny. literally cutting yourself off from learning from other people whose experiences might be different exactly. than you i'm not saying that you have to be buddy buddy with that person mm -hmm. but be civil be cordial like have a drink together uh, darn yeah. it calm <laughs> down throw some darts together <laughs> like, for me personally it's the same thing i have friends who are still active in it i have as well lost a lot of people yeah. to my discernment mm -hmm. but that makes me appreciate those who have stuck even more. It shows how open they are mm -hmm. to not only my discernment, but ultimately Christ's truth. You yeah. know? And again, there's so much you can benefit from that person just because they're active and you know a homosexual lifestyle doesn't make them any less of a person so mm -hmm. you know we're called to be christ to these people exactly. you know we might be the only bible that they ever read exactly. you know so just Ooh, cutting yourself good. off completely Come from that, on. like no that was tea okay yeah. <laughs> so next question why don't you just pray the gay away um because that's not how it works yeah <laughs> That's just, it's not how it works. And I am not saying that eventually I could not be rid of my sexual inclinations toward women. That could happen eventually. I'm not necessarily counting on it and I'm not gonna be devastated if it doesn't happen. And I think that there's a distinction that we need to make is that there's a difference between deep-seated homosexual tendencies yeah. and transitory homosexual tendencies. Mm. Deep-seated homosexual tendencies means a man or a woman probably will not ever be rid of them in their lifetime. Mm. Like it's so deeply ingrained in their psyche or uh, you know anything like that where they're probably not going to be rid of it at any time. Mm. Transitory homosexual tendencies, which is what I think I have, um, is something that a person could through good therapy through uh prayer and and all that can eventually be rid um, of their same-sex desires but i'm not going to be completely disheartened if i'm not rid of them but i think that is definitely something that i could work yeah. towards for me personally it's not something that i am necessarily counting on or thinking expecting god to accomplish per se but i heard someone say this quote that i love which is by saying that god cannot you know, per se, cure or mm -hmm. fix this, you're putting him in a box. It's true that if we say, well, he can't do that, he's never gonna make you attracted to a woman or make mm -hmm. you attracted to a man. Well, then we're telling God what he can and can't they do. do. And, and we all know what happens when <laughs> like, God shows up and he does things exactly. to prove us wrong. So, yes, we don't count on it necessarily, but God. Nothing is impossible with God. So. Yeah, absolutely. So do you ever get hate for your discernment from fellow Christians? And if so, how do you deal with it? No one in my life, I don't think, has ever said something to me online because anybody in their mom's basement at any <laughs> given time can say anything that they want to you. 
Um, I've had those instances, mm. especially like, I think in the Catholic community, there's those like old 40 year old white men yep. who like just can't get a date on a Friday night. So what they decide to do yep. is troll you online <laughs> because they have nothing else to do. Yep. But Shade. you know, it is, it is happening. So next question. Do you believe you were born this way? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Just from personal experience, I remember a time in my life where if you would have told me that I would eventually be attracted sexually or romantically to other women, I would have been so confused. I would have been like, is that even a thing? Like, do people do that? What? <laughs> I didn't even know that those two thoughts yeah. could like be together like that, yeah. you know? It was definitely something that manifested later on in my life and I think for me it was actually it was much later and it was really confusing for me it was def it was something that manifested later on you yeah. know like I, I wasn't even aware really what was happening until I think somebody like called me out on it you know you're gay <laughs> for me personally um, it doesn't make sense to me that God would create me to basically hold me against these desires and be like yeah. haha you can't do this i'm gonna make you gay but you can't act on yeah gay that's not the good that's not the good and gracious yeah. god that we profess to believe in exactly. like, why would he do something like that it, that's not kind that's not gracious that's not good it's of yeah it's do. not the god that i worship i differ in the fact that for me personally i remember younger years being attracted to men how i personally look at it is i see us all as we're human we're broken i didn't choose to have these desires but at the same time, I don't think God chose that for me either, mm. if that makes sense. This is not something where something is wrong with us. Yeah. The catechism says that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. Mm. It doesn't yeah. say that people who experience homosexual desires are intrinsically Amen. disordered. There's nothing wrong with either of us. Just because we have the desire, that doesn't mean yeah, that we yeah. are sinning, like actively sinning. The desire yeah. is just present. Now what we do with that desire is either what's sinful or not. Exactly. No. Amen. Amen. We're all human and we're all fallen mm -hmm. ever since Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And we are all broken our different ways and ultimately Christ is the one who yeah. can fix all that. Yeah, so absolutely. That's this is just the cross that we carry. Exactly. You know, we everybody has crosses. crosses. You know, you can't get through life without suffering. The tea's being spilled. <laughs> yes, here. all of it. Is the book Location of chastity worth the sacrifice? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> In either community, you know, whether it's the LGBT community or the quote unquote, like, straight community, I don't see authentic human freedom in having to be with another person. Mm -hmm. I am not half of a person. If I am to get married one day, which I do think can happen, mm -hmm. if I'm going to get married, I'm not looking for my other half. I am looking for a whole individual to complement my whole individual person. I'm not looking for somebody to complete me because I'm already complete as I am. Yes, so, I am. So, like, there's nothing missing from me. Like, I could be a celibate virgin, I could be married. Um, really, in either one, God will sustain me. I'm not sure which one I might be called to right now, but, you know, I'm gonna live chastity either as a celibate virgin or as a wife and a mother because chastity is ultimately freeing the person to love as a person ought to love. Freedom isn't loving as you want or doing what you want, it is doing and loving as you ought. This is why we have morality. Yeah. You know, like this is the law, this is moral law, mm -hmm. and this is ingrained on the hearts of all man, you know, because created beings reflect the creator. Basically, the virtue of chastity is so worth it because it offers me authentic freedom, not license to do what I, whatever I want exactly. to do. I'm actually free to give of myself mm -hmm. and I'm not just forcing myself on other people or trying to take in um, just to make me myself feel a certain way. Every experience differs, but for me at least personally, when I was living an active homosexual lifestyle and acting on my desires, I always felt like I was being held back from yeah, Christ. Yeah. And that is the one thing that I do not regret most mm -hmm. now more than ever. Not necessarily because I am chaste, but because I'm giving myself to Christ in such an, a full, intimate way, 
Now I truly feel like I am with Christ fully as one. Ultimate freedom is found yes, in, Christ. in Christ. So we got to look for it in Christ, not in each other, mm -hmm. not in the things of this world. And I think it's something that culture has so just, yeah. you know, twisted nowadays that we can find freedom in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can't. But we can't. <laughs> we need God because we were created to love Him and for Him to love us. Living in a chaste lifestyle almost makes me feel like I'm closer yeah, to Yeah, you have the freedom to love Christ exactly. and other people. Exactly. Exactly. Amen. Mm -hmm.